Pastor, relationships are based upon individual participation. But, and that's, that's kind of emotional and it's, it also has physical ramifications. But there's also a spiritual component to that, the, the Holy Spirit's role in our relationships. Uh, how do we discern that and walk in, in that spirit power in relationship? Well, that's a great question. You know, one of the things I've seen, and I've been a pastor for about 25 years. Uh, I started when I was 12. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding about that, but uh, I, I don't like to admit my age. But uh, one of the things I've seen in the years of, of working with people is that rarely do people come to see a pastor, to see me or another pastor and say, you know, I'd really like to uh, figure out how to get closer to God, or I really would love to understand how to defeat greed in my life or materialism. Mm -hmm. What they come and ask over and over again is, how can I have a better relationship? Uh, my marriage is a mess. My kids are estranged. My, my, my parents are irritating me and they want help. And, and what we often do, uh, biblically, spiritually, is we turn to passages like Ephesians 5 mm -hmm. that give great instruction about family and relationships. And, and then we go and we focus on those passages, which is mm -hmm. correct and helpful mm -hmm. and good. But one of the things I've noticed, and this ties to your question about the spirit filled, is right before Ephesians 5 goes into all of this instruction on the family, mm -hmm. The command right before that is to be filled with the Spirit. It says, do not get drunk on wine, it's Ephesians 5.18, mm -hmm. which leads to debauchery. We don't often talk about debauchery anymore, but uh, instead be filled with the Spirit. And then we're given really participles, which in Greek language means this is what it looks like to be filled with the Spirit where it talks about this idea of speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, and giving thanks, and then submitting to one another. And so before we get to, to the clear instruction on family, we're told walk in the Spirit, basically, and, and produce inside yourself, through your walk in the Spirit, a joyful, thankful, submissive heart, and then we're given the instruction on, on family. And, and the reason I find that so significant is, is if I rush to how am I going to fix my marriage, if I rush to how am I going to have a better relationship with my kids, if I rush to how to have better friendships, better work relationships, mm -hmm. instead of starting with, with the Spirit of God at work in me, I will try in my own strength to fix relationships. And if I do it okay and the other people are reciprocal, we might have really good relationships, but it will never have the strength of a spirit empowered, dying to self, surrendering, joy-filled um, kind of approach to, uh, to, to the family and to the relationships that God's given me. Would you agree that all relationships are God-given? Sure. I mean, whether they're positive or whether they're challenging, they're God-given. Mm -hmm. And Charles used to say that. He said all relationships were from God mm -hmm. And he had a little rhyme, Charles Stanley, he'd say, they were given from God, some for, and everyone for a reason, hmm. some for a lifetime, hmm. and some for just a season. Hmm. So a little rhyme, mm -hmm. a little Stanleyism that I, I picked up with him. And I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Relationships are all God-given, whether you, it's, it's, it's rubbing you the wrong way mm -hmm. or whether it's not. So in order to achieve in that relationship God's intent, mm -hmm then you cannot be successful if you're not walking in the spirit in that relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How can you be successful in God if you're not walking in that, in a spirit in a relationship? Yeah, no, you'll have a, you'll have a lid to that relationship and, and the lid will be either your own sinfulness, which none of us like to admit or acknowledge or think about, or it'll be the person that we're in the relationships with selfishness as well or their inability to give back. Again, if everything works right, and this is why people who aren't believers can have good marriages, sure, is, sure. is they can have a good marriage because they've both learned to give of themselves and follow biblical principles, mm -hmm. uh, whether they call them that or not. Um, you know, when you get into uh, wives submit to your husbands, husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church, often people get bothered by that and the language of submit and that. And I always say, you know, first of all, it's to the woman, not to the man, to say make sure, but but the command to the husband is is much harder sure is. Uh, to say give up your very life uh, for your wife, and and to the degree that anybody figures out if I give rather than try to get, um, then I'll have a stronger relationship. 
um, they'll have a good relationship. But the problem is, it's hard to maintain that without a sense of God's spirit at work in us and God's empowerment even more Amen. because Amen. because you can be aware of it, but, but if the spirit isn't active in you, mm -hmm. then what will happen is selfishness will just bubble up and take over because of sin that's inside every one of us. And then, and then, then you're trying to balance this against that and it turns into a real um, out of balance relationship. I think it's interesting that Paul then on in, in, in the sixth chapter in Ephesians, he kind of sums it all up by talking about putting on the full armor of God. Yes. Because that really is the capstone on it. You, you've got to be in the spirit, you've got to treat people in the relationship accordingly, mm -hmm. and then you have to be equipped with the armor of God in order to be successful in, this, in that spiritual warfare. Yes. Because that's what relationships are, are yeah. in many ways. Not with the person, but mm -hmm. in relationship with that person. Well, if, uh, if the enemy wants to destroy the work of God somewhere, most of the time it's destroyed through relationships. Absolutely. Marriages, churches, uh, institutions, families, it's always relational strife first mm -hmm. is the way that, that, that you see things begin to get destroyed. So break it back down for us. Number one thing, relationships are based on the spirit. Well, relationships that, that don't have individuals who are submitted first to the spirit will have a lid that they cannot experience the same kind of longevity and intimacy that relationships that that allow that each person allows the spirit to work in them will experience good word very good word take it we could take it to heart and understand what the where the starting place is and then we can build from there and understand how god wants that relationship to have impact to the world yeah. and even eternity because your marriage has eternal, your children have eternal impact. Yes. Your spiritual children have eternal impact. Mm. And the relationships that we're in, in terms of just friendships and casual relationships are all eternal too. We got to get our blinders off of this and see it yeah. like this. Well put. Thank you so much. Thank you. My pleasure. Look forward to you coming back. Thank you.